All right. In this uh, final video for the Calc 3 series, we're going to look at the divergence theorem. And we'll apply the divergence theorem to the vector field uh, that has first component x plus y plus z, second component y, and third component 2x minus y. And we'll look at the uh, surface S that is part of a cylinder, uh, unit cylinder around the z axis, x squared plus y squared equals 1. Um, and then we're going to cut it off uh, at z equals 0, the xy plane, and z equals 3. And we're going to include the top and bottom pieces um, of those planes inside the cylinder to create that uh, enclosed cylinder shape. Now, the divergence theorem relates the triple integral over the volume uh, region um, enclosed by the surface of the divergence of the vector field uh, to the uh, double integral, uh, surface integral um, of the uh, flux of the vector field through the surface that is the boundary for that region. Um, so there's, again, two ways to do the divergence theorem, and often you use it to get from one integration to an easier integration or from one that isn't possible to one that is. It seems like in a lot of these examples, the easier integral is the divergence one. And I think that's why it's called the divergence theorem. That is often the way you go um, from the surface integral to the integral, triple integral, the divergence. So in steps one and two, we calculate the left half, the triple integral, the divergence. Um, and then in steps three, four, and five, we find the um, surface integral. And those should give us the same result. Uh, all right, so step one, let's do the divergence of the vector field. So we're going to have P is the first component, Q is the second, and R is the third component of those. And then you just do partial derivatives uh, of P, Q, and R with respect to X, Y, and Z to get your divergence. So the divergence is uh, not a vector, it's a scalar quantity. So do those derivatives and just add them up. So the partial derivative of x plus y plus z with respect to x is 1. And the derivative of y with respect to y is also 1. And then the derivative of 2x minus y with respect to z is 0. So divergence is very simple here. It's just 2. Um, and that's what we would be integrating uh, to. But that's a triple integral. Um, and so if we had a complicated integrand, we would have to set up that triple integral to work around this. We probably want to use cylindrical coordinates, um, but uh, we do know that since it's just a constant, we can pull that two out, and the triple integral of dv is just the volume itself, um, and the volume of a cylinder is uh, a known uh, formula, right? It's just pi r squared h, um, uh, where r is the radius and h is the height. Uh, the radius is 1 for this cylinder, and the height is 3, right? So there's the radius and there's the height. So we get our result of 6 pi. So this will be an easy way to get the value of that uh, surface integral. Um, from the vector field. But let's do it the other way. So let's set up the uh, surface integral and get 6 pi for that as well. Uh, now, when it comes to the surface, it's actually uh, consists of three subsurfaces. Um, let's go ahead and plot it here. So there's the cylinder. And then we've already got uh, the xy plane there. Um, let's go ahead and put in the plane z equals 3. And so you've got uh, sort of three subsurfaces. So. The main subsurface is the cylinder itself, uh, just chopped off here, right? 
And so that's going to be, uh, we'll call that S1. Now we parameterize that surface, we get R1. Um, we use U and V. Didn't leave myself enough room there, sorry. Uh, but it's a whole bunch of circles, right? And so we'll let, uh, what do I do? U is like theta. And so we'll say they're circles. They're all unit circles, right? All these circles have radius one. And so they're all cosine U, sine U for the X and Y components. And then the third component, Z, we'll let that be the other parameter, V. And so what you end up having is that u goes from 0 to 2 pi to trace out the full circle, and then v goes from 0 to 3 to trace out that part of the cylinder. Now, if your radius was something else, you'd have to put the radius right there, but radius is 1. So that's the parameterization of the side of this cylinder. Um, and for orientation, it just says positively oriented. Um, which is rather unclear. Um, let's look at the other two subsurfaces. So there's the top, uh, which is a disk up here, right? And when you're up there, uh, R2, um, you need to trace out circles uh, with radius that varies. And so we'll keep using u for theta and let v be the radius. So v cosine u, v sine u. And then the z values are all equal to 3, because you're up here at, at z equals 3. So u is like theta again, and it goes from 0 to 2 pi. And then v is like your radius. Uh, to form the full disk, you go from 0 out to 1. All right, so if you get that, then you'd get the bottom pretty quickly because the bottom, S3, has a very similar setup. Um, in fact, the parameterization, first two components is the same, V cosine U, V sine U, the third component, though, is zero, because we're here at the xy plane, where z equals zero. Um, zero, or u still goes from zero to two pi, and v still goes from zero to one. So it's just that third component that differs between those. So that parameterizes our three subsurfaces, um, and that's really step three, right? So we have those. We will... I think go through the process, um, the rest of the process to get the surface integral for each one separately. I just wanted to kind of work those out with the graph. All right, so let's start with S1, which is the side. And then what we're going to do is get the normal vector. Remember, for that, we first need to get uh, tu and tv. So taking partial derivatives of x, y, and z with respect to u and then v. With respect to u, uh, we've got the derivative of cosine is negative sine, derivative of sine is cosine, and then a 0 because v is a constant. With respect to v, 
uh, constant, constant, and a one. And then let's take the cross product of those two vectors. So again, kind of think of little matrix there. And for the first component, uh, we've got cosine minus zero. For the second component, negative out front and then negative sine minus zero. So sine of zero. And then for the third component, it's just zero minus zero. Right. Um, then we want to replace x, y, and z with these components from the parameterization to get f in terms of u and v. So first component is x plus y plus z, which would be cosine u plus sine u plus v. y would be sine u. And then 2x minus y is 2 cosine u minus sine v. Uh, though I guess I need that right here. So I can do this dot product a little easier. So I'm just going to rewrite it. And then for the dot product, we would multiply component-wise and then add those products up, and that will be our integrand. So multiplying the first components, I've got uh, cosine squared plus cosine sine plus v cosine u. For the second components, I've got sine squared. And then for the third component, just 0. Sine squared and cosine squared is 1. And so we get 1 plus cosine u sine u plus v cosine u. And that's a double integral for du dv. Uh, u goes from 0 to 2 pi, and v goes from 0 to 3. All right, I guess we need to show that. That's not a trivial integral. All right, so we're going to do u integration first. Antiderivative of uh, 1 would be u. Uh, for cosine u sine u, um, we could either do cosine squared or sine squared. Uh, I think sine squared is a little easier because it avoids the negative, right? So do 1 half sine squared u. The derivative of that should be cos sine times cosine. Uh, and then for the v cosine u, we would have a v sine u. And that's evaluated from 0 to 2 pi, uh, where u is 2 pi and u is 0. Now, sine uh, of 2 pi and 0 are both 0, so none of this really has a non-zero contribution except for when u, regular u equals 2 pi, right? So that whole thing goes down to just a 2 pi, and then you have the integral over v from 0 to 3, uh, and so you get 2 pi times 3, or 6 pi. So that's the contribution of the flux of the vector field through the side of the cylinder. Now we repeat the process for the top and bottom, and then we'll add those results together. So save that 6 pi, we'll come back to it later. All right, so now for the top. Which is S2. So 
So this is where we had cosine sine and then three, right? Z equals three is the top. Uh, let's find our T, U, and T, V vectors. Derivatives with respect to U, we've got negative sine U, cosine U, and zero. Uh, derivative with respect to V, zero, zero, zero. Wait, that's not the right parameterization. <laughs> it's like this shouldn't give it all zeros. Uh, there's a V there and a V there, yeah, to make the disk. So uh, U goes from zero to two pi because U is acting like theta. And then V goes from zero to one. V is the radius making it a full disk. All right. Sorry about that. All right, so derivatives with respect to U, uh, negative v sine u, v cosine u, zero. Derivatives with respect to v, cosine u, sine u, and zero. Now we can do our cross product. And you'll get zero for the first component and zero for the second component. The third component is the one that's non-zero. Um, and you'll get uh, sine v negative v sine squared u minus v cosine squared u, and so you get a negative v. So the orientation here um, is should be pretty clear, and the The normal vectors here are obviously just going to be in the z direction, right? So we're here at the top, and we're essentially just getting this vector pointing straight up in the z direction. So that is a normal. Um, the orientation was kind of ambiguous, said positively oriented. Um, but I'm guessing that that is positively oriented since z is positive there, a positive z vector. I don't know. I don't like positively oriented. I'm not actually sure exactly what that means. Mm. So um, if we get the orientation wrong, the sign uh, of the result, the positive or negative SIGN will be the opposite and we should be able to tell then. That looks right. And then when we get to the, the bottom, the bottom should also be a z vector, but um, perhaps there be pointed out. I think positively oriented means pointing out, and our other vector was for the side was pointing out like that. All right, so back to this calculation. We want to now write the vector field in terms of the parameterization. So going back to the vector field, replacing x with v cosine u, y with v sine u, and z with 3, we get f in terms of u and v. So x plus y plus z is v cosine u plus v sine u plus 3. y is just v sine u. And then 2x minus y is 2v cosine u minus v sine u. Now we do a dot product between the cross product vector from step four, the normal, and this vector field from what we just found. So we're multiplying those component wise, notice that the uh, First two products are zero because of that normal vector having zero components. Uh, so it's only the third components that would give us something non-zero and we just multiply by negative V. Um, and so that'll give us V squared sine U minus two V squared cosine U.
and we are integrating du dv according to these limits. So u goes from zero to two pi and v goes from zero to one. And it looks like I need room again. All right, let's do the u integral first. Inter Antiderivative of sine of u is cosine of u. And antiderivative of cosine is sine. So take your derivative there and double check that. That gets evaluated from zero to two pi. Uh, sine of zero and two pi are both zero. So the cosine is the part that's gonna be non-zero. Um, but uh, cosine of two pi and cosine of zero are the same. Um, and so that would actually just give us zero. And there's still a V integration, but since the integrand is zero, the result there is zero. So end up getting zero contribution from the top. We're also going to get zero contribution from the bottom, uh, which shouldn't be a surprise because we got six pi from the divergence half and we got six pi from the side. So the top and bottom should both be zero. Uh, we didn't know right away because it could have been that the top and bottom were opposite values and they added to zero. But at this point, the bottom should be zero. All right, so last one, now looking at the top. Or sorry, the bottom of this thing, S3. So it's V cosine U, V sine U, but we put a zero there. All right, so, and then u goes from 0 to 2 pi, and v goes from 0 to 1. So tu should be the same, uh, negative v sine u, v cosine u, 0, tv cosine u, sine u, 0. Um, so we did have a different component in the third component, so just checking that that might affect things. It didn't because that three uh, just led to some zeros here in the third components of TU and TV. So this should be the same. Um, we get zero, zero. Um, and we get negative V. So that's going to be pointed down, orienting outward, um, which I'm guessing as a, a sign, aligns with being positively oriented. Though it could be that it was, you want that up. I mean, here it doesn't end up mattering the orientation because um, the contribution will be zero either way. So I'm not sure. All right, uh, the vector field in terms of U and V be very similar uh, to before. We've got v cosine u plus v sine u, but instead of adding three, we just have that. So that's x plus y plus c. Uh, y is the same. And then 2x minus y. That. But when we do the dot product of these two, um, again, it's just product of those, those, you get zero, zero, and then your non-zero one uh, is v squared sine u minus two v squared or sine u. So I think that's the same thing, right? And then we integrate that 
with respect to u and v, u goes from zero to two pi, v goes from zero to one. Antiderivative with respect to u, uh, co negative v squared cosine u, and then negative two v squared sine u. So again, you get zero from evaluating this first u integration. So the integral from zero to one of zero dv is just zero. So adding up the surfaces, uh, subsurfaces, zero from the top, zero from the bottom, and then six pi from the side, and we get six pi, which is the uh, total value for the surface integral, and that matches the triple integral of the divergence we found in steps one and two, thus validating the divergence theorem. All right. Well, good work. Thanks for hanging in there. That's all the methodologies for Calc 3. Uh, so until, I guess, differential equations, that's, that's it.